Good evening, honorable council members. Um, my brothers and I come to you today as humble ambassadors of our Lord Jesus Christ to encourage you to do the right thing before God and to lay the judgment that's befallen our city. It is no wonder that Tulsa is plagued by crime, poverty, and homelessness as we are willfully allowing for the very things that God hates. God says in his word in the book of Proverbs that he hates the hands that shed innocent blood and that is exactly what's happening near 31st in Sheridan. There are many churches and thousands of Christians, professing Christians in Tulsa, but we know from Isaiah chapter one that God is not listening to our prayers and is hiding his eyes from us because our hands are full of blood. So I'm back again today with a plea for all of us from this same chapter to wash ourselves and make ourselves clean by removing this evil from our city and from his eyes in the hopes that God will restore favor to Tulsa. One day, children will visit museums um, devoted to this Holocaust and they will say to themselves, what in the world were they thinking and why didn't they stop it? And they'll also see videos of the applause in New York, the white dressed female uh, regiment in Congress sitting smugly while the president proclaimed what should be obvious and without dispute, that all human life is precious. And the Virginia House delegate who sponsored two bills in the same day, one to allow human babies to be killed at 40 weeks gestation, and the other to save the lives of insects and sadly, a couple of other shocking images from this past month in <coughs> Oklahoma, as Christians from all over the state and beyond came to the, the halls of our state legislature at the Capitol to support a bill for the total abolition of child sacrifice and were opposed by some of the very people who should be spiritual leaders in proclaiming God's word over this atrocity. The insanity of these things will be all too obvious for those future school children and they will shake their heads in horror and shame. They might also see videos like the one being taken right now of concerned Christians having the courage to withstand abuse and honor God by speaking up for the lives of these precious tiny victims of our modern day Holocaust. And they will wonder why there weren't more and why it took so long for the good people to rise up against evil. They'll wonder why Christians who hold the promises of all our almighty and powerful Savior that he will be with us wherever we go. They'll wonder why so many of these Christians were afraid and acted in fear when they compromised with evil by passing and opposing and not opposing legislation to regulate murder as if it were actually health care. They will also wonder why so many Christians were apathetic as I used to be and went about their daily business as if babies weren't being led to slaughter by their own parents at a known location within their own city. So what you do with your life and the authority given to you right now as elected government officials will determine your legacy and how you'll be portrayed in history, not to mention how you'll be judged by God. Are we going to fear the iniquitous decrees of man in defense of, in defiance of the will of the creator of the universe as set forth in his holy word? Or are we going to defy the federal tyrants who are dead wrong on this issue and do everything in our power to rescue innocent children from death? So I call upon the city of Tulsa today to start enforcing the laws against murder. You have that are, thank you. They're already on the books with equity for all people, regardless of age, location, and stage of development. And to ignore the pages of iniquitous regulation which have allowed for the backdoor justification for the execution of approximately 25 babies each week in our city. So in closing, this is shameful, and this shouldn't be what we're about as Tulsans or as Oklahomans or as Americans, or as just plain human beings created in the image of God. Uh, this should be unthinkable, and I pray that someday and soon it will be. But until that time, uh, we'll keep talking, we'll keep coming back whenever we can, and pleading with people to do whatever they have to do, to repent of their apathy and take a stand for the lives of these innocents. And we'll keep proclaiming the good news that God can save you through Jesus Christ, who is God incarnate and is ruling and reigning today, who came to earth as an infant in the womb, lived a perfect life, was crucified, died, and was buried, and rose again in glory for the salvation of all who will repent and follow him. I urge you all to do that before it's too late. Thank you.
George Lewis.